evening. This, this is Wednesday night. This Wednesday night. <laughs> welcome. Welcome, welcome home. Welcome to Prophetically Speaking. Yes, yes. It has been a while. It is. Almost and, uh, a month. And a lot of life has been lived. <laughs> A whole lot of life has yes. been lived yes. and survived. More life, no drink. Mm. Mm-hmm. So today's topic or this evening's topic is going to be about hoarding. Hoarding. And so we have a special treat for everybody. Yes, yes. We want you to get healed tonight. Hoarding is not just about things and possessions. Oh, right. It's about relationships. Yeah. It's a mental thing. An it's, emotional thing, mm-hmm. a physical thing. It's about uh and even a spiritual thing. Holding on to things of the past. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Ideology. Ideology. Behavior. Mm-hmm. Patterns. Idols. And so we're going to get into prayer. Yes, yes. And then we're going to talk a little bit about what hoarding is. Yes, yes. And then we'll get into some scripture and get into the declarations. Yes, yes. And then get into prayer again. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Father God, we thank you for this evening. Father God, we thank you for every eye that's watching, every ear that's hearing. Father God, we we thank you for allowing us to be filled with the spirit, Father God, to guide us through this. Father God, we thank you for this word that that we're about to release, Father God. And this word, Father God, we, we pray that... Wisdom is gained from this word, Father God, and that it sinks deep into the hearts of the listeners and the watchers, Father God, so that they may carry it with them. Father God, empower us and strengthen us, Father God, to release this word, Father God. And we pray that you just continue to be you, continue to be a healer, a redeemer, a deliverer, Father God. And we pray that you allow the people to receive it, Father God, so they can strengthen them and help them to move forward inside of your will toward the purpose that you set aside for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes, yes. So let's talk about what hoarding is. Hoarding. Y'all know. Y'all seen y'all know somebody there. Matter of fact, all y'all hoarding. <laughs> I'm saying uh read them the hoarding definition. This definition was from WebMD. What? WebMD. WebMD. Oh, 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 see, medical, huh? Okay. All right. Hoarding. A persistent difficulty discarding or parting with possessions because of a perceived perceived need to save them it is deemed a mental health condition in which a person feels an extremely strong need to hold on to things whether they have value or not that only cause clutter uncleanliness chaos and disaster hello hello and that was my addition you know, WebMD just said it was a persistent difficulty discarding or parting with possessions because of a perceived need to save them. And in addition, just from my research of just looking this up and just mm-hmm. reading multiple definitions, multiple, I can and experiencing it by seeing it, witnessing it rather, not experiencing it, but witnessing mm-hmm. it. I found out that it is in fact deemed as a mental health condition. Mm-hmm. Where they really do feel like they have to hold on to things, yeah, guys. And yeah. it doesn't matter whether it has yeah. value. And this is monetary value, familial value, anything. Yeah. And anything. funny enough, funny enough, and I don't know that this is true, but it's just something that I perceive that uh, most people who hoard or most people who feel like they have to hold on to things that are unnecessary, those are the same people who seem to struggle with depression. Absolutely. I also believe that these people also struggle with their faith because it is, in fact, a fear response. Fear. Because they fear. I to hold on to this. I cannot let this go. Oh, my gosh. This might come back in style 10 years from now. Oh, my gosh. What if the Holocaust happens and I need this in three years? You know what I'm saying? You know, anything. And and the issue, the issue with that is that you have placed a certain level of comfort and dependency mm-hmm. on the things, on the items, on the person, on the situationship. Yeah. On the entanglement. With no indication that it is indeed a help to you. Absolutely. With no indication that it is indeed something that'll move you forward. Mm-hmm. 
In fact, with indication that it's going to move you backwards. And since you cannot let it go, it is in fact your master. You are a slave to it because you can't let it go. It owns you. Yep. Therefore, you are in bondage. You are not free. Bondage. In bondage. Bondage. Now, Oxford describes bondage as the state of being a slave. Mm Mm-hmm. And so what I gathered from that was oppression, mm-hmm. captivity, mm-hmm. domination, mm-hmm. imprisonment, mm-hmm. duress. Mm-hmm. All of these things apply to you if there is something in your life that you are hoarding. It doesn't matter if it's a physical material material of idea. Ideology, a behavior, a way of thinking, a mindset, an attitude uh-huh. does not matter. Yeah. And um, that's who we are here. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so we're going to get set free today from hoarding, hoarding because it is, in fact, a spirit that is holding you bondage. Right. Maybe even an ungodly soul tie. Yep. Yep. And so we're going to. Like I said, we're going to go further and we're going to, you know, gather what the Bible has to say about this. Some scriptures anyway. Yeah. Just a few. We only have about four for you guys today so that we can have some time for the declaration. Yes, yes. The first scripture that we're going to read to you is Ecclesiastes 5 verses 15 through 17. It says people come into the world with nothing. Mm hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. And when they die, they leave with nothing. Mm -hmm. They might work hard to get things, Mm -hmm. but they cannot take anything with them when they die. You've heard that saying. You cannot take it with you when you die. It is very sad that people leave the world Mm -hmm. just as they came. Mm -mm -mm. So what does a person gain from trying to catch the wind? Mm -hmm. They only get days that are filled with sadness and sorrow. In the end, they are troubled. Sick and angry. Because you placed importance on something that does not serve you at all. What do you gain from trying to get the same car that your enemy had? Because, you know, they just, they can't upstage you. Hey, guess what? When you get into it, turn the ignition and press the gas, it drives exactly the same. I'm saying that. <laughs> what do you gain by staying in this relationship just because he provides for you? Meanwhile, he treats you like crap. Uh-huh. Is that what you want to? Is that how you want to? Is that what you want to use to mirror yourself? What are you direction? gaining from recreationally smoking weed? Or drinking alcohol so much that your mind is so consumed, it's so altered. It's in an altered state because it's filled with so many chemicals and things that are not of God. And you can't even focus on what God wants you to do. You can't even listen for his voice because you're somewhere else. You're in an an, an ultimate state. Yes. In another world where your mind is being altered. Because you have placed so much dependency on the drug, on the alcohol, on the cigarette, on whatever it is comforting you, making you feel comfortable. So you think it is a pseudo comfort. But what do you gain from it? Other than health problems. Yeah. Maybe even what seems to be a short term or temporary relief. Long term brain cells lost. I'm saying I choose one strong. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 I, I know some of y'all smoking and feel like uh, it gives you extra intelligence. You know, you be smart, dumb. Whatever. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter five thirteen it says there is another serious problem I have seen under the sun. Hoarding riches harms the saver. But this applies to Hoarding. not just riches, right? Guys. Right. Anything of that you deem of value or that you feel like you need, anything besides God right. that you feel like you need, idols, and any and everything can be made your idol if you allow it to be. Yep. Your own bedroom can be your idol if you never leave it. Yeah. If you feel like this bedroom is the only barrier between me and danger, this bedroom is the only thing keeping me safe. 
<laughs> Life will prove you wrong of that. You really. have <laughs> you have turned your bedroom into a hiding place instead of hiding in Christ, mm-hmm. hiding mm-hmm. in the arms of the Lord. You have turned that bedroom into a hiding place from your purpose, from, from your, your purpose, destiny, from, from your life, pur- from love, from helping others. And if you are, if, and if you're not in either of those. There is absolutely no way that you can be inside of God. You're but literally wasting you space. Can't, you can't be inside of his will if you separate it from it. Most of those things, plus, and you can add a couple on that list, but there's no way for you to be inside of God's will. And if you're outside of God's will, no matter what riches you got, when, you, when it's time to go. Unless God has placed you in a state of isolation or has told you to stay home, you cannot fulfill your purpose by never going anywhere, never you interacting with people. You never. Okay, you're an introvert. Okay, yeah. you're quiet. Okay, you're shy. But God has equipped you with everything you need to fulfill that calling. Right. Just like Moses. Oh man, I I I can't, I can't speak. speak. Well. You're not a speaker. I stutter. I'm I'm just really not great with talking to people. Yeah. How you going? How, how God, can you? How can you spread the gospel inside your gift? Think about God's response to Moses. Like God, who is the one that has created your mouth, yes. your tongue? Yes. Like, sir, I, I know all that. I don't care about all that. Do what I said. And even when he sent Aaron, it was like, oh, okay, if you must have someone, take Aaron. But Moses was equipped. Stutter or not, he yeah. was equipped to do the job all by himself with the Lord Jesus. Yep. yep. With God. Yep. And so we have two more scriptures for you, and these are much longer. Yeah. But this just really, I mean, this ice is the cake when it comes to hoarding, holding on to things. Both of these is is something that really relates to our lives and we're gonna it's all gonna make sense in the end yes matthew chapter 6 verses 19 through 34 Mm -hmm. it says don't save treasures for yourselves here on earth Mm -hmm. moths and rust will destroy them yes yes. and thieves can break into your house and steal them Mm -hmm. instead save your treasures in heaven where they cannot be destroyed by moths or rust and where thieves cannot break in and steal them Hello. Mm -hmm. Any possession that you think you have right now can be stolen. Any physical thing you have, any emotional attachment you have, it can be stolen. Mm -hmm. It can be stolen. Mm -hmm. Even people, to some extent, you want to extend a level of trust to Mm -hmm. people, but not so much to the point that they control your joy, Mm -hmm. your peace, your Mm -hmm. happiness, guys. Because anybody can hurt you. They're human. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, we uh, we uh, heard something earlier uh, where the pastor said that that uh, people's approval can be taken. Hello. So you can do all of this work to gain someone's approval, a person, a human. Yeah. And, and as soon as they see fit, nope. Hello. Not anymore. That girl you slept with last night, poof, can be gone mm-hmm. tomorrow. On to the next in another bed with somebody else tonight. Yeah. And 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 the reason that they take it doesn't even have to be justifiable. If they take their approval, there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Absolutely. So what are you gonna spend your whole life trying to regain approval over and over yeah. and over and over again? And listen to verse 21. It says, Your heart will be where your treasure is. Mm. And if your heart is in mud. That's where your treasure is, and it ain't much. Yeah, ain't your much. heart is in heaven. Uh-huh. That's a whole lot of treasure. Yeah, God's it's approval. Anywhere is, else, God's approval is more ironclad than humans. Even if you feel like right now it's a whole lot of pre- uh, a pleasure, it's going to be. It's going to end in disaster. Mm. Yeah. Too much dependency on anything other than God ends in disaster. Yeah, God's approval is. Not- he won't take his approval. Now you can give it back, mm-hmm. <laughs> but he won't take it. <laughs> Verse 22. The only source of light for the body is the eye. If you look at people and want to help them, you will be full of light. But if you look at people in a selfish way, you will be full of darkness. And if the only light you have is really darkness, you have the worst kinds of darkness. You cannot serve two masters at the same mm. time. 
I'm going to say it again. You cannot serve, serve two, two masters, masters at the, the same, same time. time. You will hate one and love the other. Hmm. I wonder how many people love the Lord but hate themselves. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. How many people in love with a quote unquote man? Mm-hmm. Hate God. I'm saying though. I'm saying though, well, you cannot serve that, two masters at the same time. You will hate one and love the other, or you will be loyal to one hey, and not care, care about, about the other. other. How many of you being so loyal to your partner that you have just forgotten about what God wants you to do? Hey, I don't know. Oh, man, we can't break up. You know what I'm saying? Like they was, I know, I know it's toxic, but they was with me from day one. So, you know, I know God told me to just leave them alone, but you know, I'm, I'm just trying to be nice. How many of y'all are loyal to your little homies, your little homies, your boys or your girls? You know, when everyone else, when they do wrong, it's the end of the world for them, but your little crew. They can cross you in a different kind, in any kind, any kind of way, and it's all right. How many of you fellas got that bros before mm-hmm. concept, and so therefore now you disrespecting your wife or the lady that is de- meant and designed to be your wife, just so you can meet the expectations of some friends that you ain't gonna have five years from now. Yeah, or some fellas that's gonna be alone for the rest of their lives lives because of their mentality and you about to mess around and be alone too yeah, truly, because you're following in. Truly ask yourself where you stand because if you do, if you stand here but you standing with a bunch of people that stand there, you stand there. <laughs> and if you a straight man and you letting your boys dictate your relationship with your lady? I don't know if you the straight you just being straight in That arrow's kind of clear. That arrow's kind of bent. And if you keep going into that direction, <laughs> that arrow's going to be broken. Hello. <laughs> we know what the Bible says. <laughs> arrow, that arrow's going to be broken. Uh, uh, word to Oklahoma. Mm-mm. <laughs> you cannot serve God and money at the same time. Lord knows the love of money, not money. The, the love, love of, of money. money is the root of all evil. Yeah. See, Get it out of your mind. Get it out of your head. The Lord he is the one who upgrades. He is the one that promotes. He is the one that provides provision. The sooner you realize that, you can begin to get out of your hole and just follow Jesus. Do what the Lord God has told you to do. Be obedient. Live righteously. And you will be blessed. Right. Because as, I, as I've as i told, because I've worked in ministry before, and as I've told people, don't come to work to be to try, don't come to work with the with the with the thought of mind to try to. Oh, I'm coming here to climb the ladder, or I'm coming here to do this. Or to, don't come to work to try to be the boss. Come to work to serve. Yeah. Because the moment that you decide that you're trying to be bigger than the spot that you're in, then you can't be content in that spot that you're in. Right. Because now you feel like because you think you're supposed to be this, you deserve this. Now, when we're talking about what God is giving you, let's newsflash. None of us, none of us, you, me, my children, my, my dad, none of them, none of us deserve anything that we've been given. So the moment that you start getting entitled, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, the moment you start feeling like I'm supposed to have this, yeah. as opposed to I'm supposed to serve, or I'm supposed to give, or I'm supposed to sow, yeah. then now... Those riches, that money, these friends, that car, that house, these clothes, that girl, they become idols. And as it said, you can't serve God and money at the same time. You've got to believe and truly believe that God is your provider. Yeah, you can't be out here uh, uh, with all of these lowercase g's. And that is an issue with hoarding. A lot of times with hoarding, you have forgotten that God is your provider. Your healer, your protector, yes. every and anything you need, your teacher, your lawyer, everything he is. No need to hold on to things that's not going to benefit yeah. you, that's only hurting you if yeah. you truly believe what the word yeah. says about who God on is. You're holding on to them, hoping that they serve a purpose of uh, making you feel better or making a memory or whatever you're holding on to it for. 
uh, uh, be present. Trust and trust and believe. Any memory that you need when it's time, because obviously no one goes through their twenty four hours of a day just thinking about memories all day. But the the, the moment that you uh put put all of these past memories before what is current and in the present time now, then that's all you just gonna live there. And if you live in there, you you just gonna sit there. You gonna sit in that room with all of those memories and do nothing. Hello. And that memory, those memories are gonna be your reality. And because you make those memories your reality, anything moving forward doesn't matter. Now you hold this memory hostage, and that memory is the height of your success in your mind. Hello. So with that said, I mean, if you if you look back at high school for the rest of your life. Will you ever reach adulthood? It's foolish. <laughs> it's foolish. It's back there. You ain't going to get it back. It's back there. Let's move on. So please stop saying good old days. Ain't no such thing if your good old days are ahead. Verse 25. So I tell you, don't worry about the things you need to live. Don't worry about what? The things, things you, you need, need to, to live. live. What you will eat, drink, or wear. You mean to tell me I can't obsess over them new Jordans? Mm-mm. You can't. I'm saying I'm trying to be cool. I'm trying to be fresh or whatever on fleek. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when you meet your keeper, he won't be judging you by your sneakers. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and God ain't going to say, oh, you got the new fives on. All right, let him in. No, he won't. He won't. Because God's approval is not based on material things. Yeah. Oh, God. Think about what Jesus is walking around in, man. Come on. Sanders. Let's think about John the Baptist. Like, he was peculiar, mm-hmm. strange, a weirdo. To, so yeah. they called him. Yeah, to people stand, based on people's standards. He ate locusts. His hair was wild. Mm-hmm. He lived in the wild. As far as they knew, they, I mean, it's just like, man. He looked crazy. They thought he was crazy. And they yeah. even thought he was talking crazy. Yeah. He wasn't. But, I mean, if somebody, the way the Bible describes John the Baptist as appearing, if somebody appeared like that and walked up to you right now and tried to talk to you, you'd um, be like, uh, no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sir. So, you have to understand that God is also not concerned with that. Now, if he has blessed you with nice, decent clothes. Yep, yep. Great. Great. Great, great that you can afford nice things. And hopefully you are also blessing others and and, and spreading that wealth. Don't let those nice things be I'm you. Don't let those nice things be the reason you wake up. Hello. Don't be those the nice things. Don't let those nice things be the reason that you do what you do. Don't obsess over it. Don't not pay your rent that's due in three days because you're trying to get this new dress. For the club tonight, you trying to get these new shoes, you trying to get this car, you paying this expensive tail car note when you can't even pay your electricity bill on time. If you know your rent due, get the out the club. Hello. Hello. (laughs) So anyway, life is more important than food and the body is more important than what you put on it. That's still verse 25, 26. Look at the birds. They don't plant harvest or save food in barns but your heavenly father feeds them now how is it that they don't do none of the stuff that i'm out here working my hind part out just i'm just out here just grinding yeah. sweating off for the bag yeah i ain't never you seen to tell me the birds don't do it and yet they still eat i ain't never seen a bird go go sit and do an interview for t-mobile you mean to tell me they ain't like piling up their nests with like seeds? They will go right so fast. They pile, they ain't piling up their nests with seeds. Meanwhile, I'm trying to just stack, stack, stack. It's all about the bag, bag, bag. I don't even know if we can be here tomorrow to spend it. Yeah, you, 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 you don't see, uh, you don't see birds trying to be, trying to, uh, live in the flyest tree. Hello. <laughs> trying to make sure they got the biggest nest. <laughs> it's strictly. The biggest fruit on a tree. It's strictly for necessity. I'm saying, I'm saying. And so guys, don't you know you are worth much more than they are? That's yes, what the yes. Bible says. You are worth much more, much more than those birds. 
You cannot add any time to life by worrying about it. 28, and why do you worry about clothes? Look at the wildflowers in the field. See how they grow. They don't work or make clothes for themselves. But I tell you that even Solomon, the great and rich king, was not dressed as beautifully as one of these flowers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That tells mm -hmm. us exactly what God's idea mm -hmm. of beauty mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly what God's idea of beauty is. Yeah, when you the buy, very rich. I mean, he was goaded out. You know, when you buy flowers, when you buy flowers for your lady. You don't have to do anything to them. You don't have to put any sprinkles on them. You don't have to dress them up. Now, after you get them and you you don't put water in them and they die, that's something else. But but when you get them, you don't have to do anything to them but pay for them. You've never seen a rose that you had to prepare to give to someone. Hello, hello. They're beautiful. And I mean, guys, some of you are hoarding makeup. Yeah. Clothes. Mm -hmm. It's never going to come back. Oh, I, I, mm -hmm. I, 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 was, I was able to fit in this dress in college. I'm telling you, I'm going to get back in it. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. Even if you lose weight, no, it's never right. going to freaking yeah. happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, for some of you, you know, just just get some clothes. All right, yeah. just get some clothes that fit and just let it go. Yeah. Now, if you're unhealthy, get healthy. Okay. You know, not to discourage you. You're really on a weight loss yeah. journey, but you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Let's get real here. Get rid of the college jersey. It's not coming back in style. Bros. The jersey hey, dress. Bros. Get rid bros. of it. Bros. 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 In 2024, okay. Stop the long tees. Leave, gone. leave, leave, um, leave Mitchell and Ness on the basketball court, okay? Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Drop your fubu, all right? It's over. First of all, you should leave your fubu alone anyway, separate from this whole lesson. Listen, I'm gonna uh, let's do a sidebar. Listen, no, okay, bad you, okay? No, you should not have. Stop on. <laughs> All right, listen, I don't want to see y'all walking around with fat Albert on your clothes. Huh? Oh my. The kids are silly. Okay. okay, if you wear if you're from where I'm from, you know what I'm talking about. City trim city trends oh. platinum fubu. Okay. And don't forget it's fashion. <laughs> all right, all right, calm down here. But yes, yes, no, 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 no. Okay, stop trying to live in yesteryear, okay? Just let it go. Just let it go. All right. Verse 30, if God makes what grows in the field so beautiful, what do you think he will do for you? Mm -hmm. It's just grass. Mm -hmm. One day it's alive and the next mm -hmm. day someone throws it into a fire. But God cares enough to make it beautiful. He yeah. cares enough to make something that's literally just going to die. Get so burned. Bad. Get burned like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. In a fire. Yeah. He cares enough to make it beautiful, even if just for one second. So how much more will he do for you, his children, whom he loves? Yeah. And on top of that, that, fl that flower didn't have to go through anything. Yeah. Surely he will do much more for you. Your faith is so small. Don't worry and say, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? That's what those people who don't know God are always thinking about. Mm -hmm. If you're always mm -hmm. thinking about that, ask yourself if you truly know who your father is. Yes, yeah. yeah. See, it's see right it. here in scripture. I didn't say it. He said it. Adam and Eve didn't have no clothes. And all their food was given to them until they started behaving like uh, they ain't no God. For sure. <laughs> Even when he kicked them out of the garden, not once did I hear them say, oh, man, how are we going to eat now? Uh -huh. How are we going to raise these mm -hmm. kids now? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How how are we going to survive? <clears throat> when, when they realized they were naked, they didn't even say, what are we going to wear now? <laughs> they didn't say, what are we going to wear now? No. No, they did not. They went and got some shrubs, some leaves, whatever, and made them some clothes. So it is what it is, okay? Yeah. That's what those people who don't know God are always thinking about. That's yeah. verse 32. Don't yeah. worry, because your father in heaven knows that you need all these things. He would. He knows, knows that, that you, you need, need all, all these things. things. He would. Knows, knows that you, you need, need all, all these things. things. He knows. 
He knows. He knows. Cause some of y'all go to God and Lord God. He already he knows. Yeah. Shut up. Pray for somebody else. Pray for something that's actually important. He knows. Yeah. What you should want most is God's kingdom and doing what he wants you to do. That's verse 33. Mm -hmm. That is what you shall want most. And if that is in fact what you want most, you ain't hoarding. Mm -hmm. Then he will give you all these other things you need. All these other all things, these other things. you need. He will give. So don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about what? Tomorrow. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So tomorrow will have its own worries. Yes, it did. So stop holding on to this, thinking that tomorrow will be this and next day it'll be that. Tomorrow has its own worries. Yeah. You make problems for tomorrow before tomorrow you get. Hello. And that's why you can't even catch up. Yeah. Cause you just piling it on yourself. Shoot. Oh, the devil attacking me. He trying to no, know you doing it all by yourself. Yeah. You ever you you get in, you ever see somebody after a fight, and it's like, um, did you hit him? Yeah. Cause it looks like they took all the hits. Yeah. Like, did you fight yourself? Like, what? Did you punch yourself in the face? Yeah. Did you? Because uh, this person has no marks, but all the marks are on you. It looked like you just ran into the wall. Repeatedly. That's what some of y'all's lives look like, and the devil ain't even touched you yet. You doing it to yourself? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. All right, we're gonna get into the next scripture. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna move it along, guys, so we can get to these declarations. Genesis. Genesis chapter 19, verses 1 through 38. Now, guys, some of you know the story. Some of you don't. This is the story where Lot is in Sodom and Gomorrah. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because it was a very, very sinful, sinful town. It was just horrible. They were doing uh, all types ungodly of stuff. sexual acts and just i mean thieving thieving i mean it was just <laughs> it was just not good it was completely it was a bunch of crazy major unrighteous yeah. living yeah. in this area yeah just a bunch of people that lived life like god didn't exist and as christians we are to be the light even in bad areas and bad situations or in ungodly um circumstances mm -hmm. oh, oh, we are to be that light but yes. at the same time a christian a true christian with the holy spirit in them mm -hmm. is just not comfortable in a place like that yeah. you're just not going to be comfortable i'm not saying that you're not going to be there because if god has called you to this area for a specific season then perhaps yeah but you're not going to be comfortable while you're there you're going to have god's peace right but it's also still going to be something in your spirit that is just not comfortable there and just surrounded by filth, uh -huh. darkness, and ungodliness. Yep, yep, yep. You know, you're going to feel that. That's how I felt about New Orleans, but that's another story. Yeah, that's another story. Genesis chapter 19, verses 1 through 38. That evening, the two angels, please come to my house and I will serve you. There you can wash your feet and stay the night. Then tomorrow, you can continue your journey. So, you know, he was trying to show them hospitality. The angels answered, no, we will not stay the night. No, no, we will stay the night in the city square. But Lot continued to ask them to come to his house. So they agreed and went with him. Lot gave them something to drink. He baked some bread for them and they ate it. That evening, just before bedtime, men from every part of town. Can you believe it? Soon as angels get there. They just ripped men from every part of town came to Lot's house. They stood around the house and called to Lot. 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 They said, where are the two men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us. We want to have sex with them. Lot went outside and closed the door behind him. I mean, just imagine it. Like, just... What are y'all doing here? You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he heard him close the door behind him. Because he like, no, no, no. He said to the men, no, my friends, I beg you, please don't do this evil thing. He's begging them. Look, 
I have two daughters who have never slept with a man before. I will give my daughters to you. Now, That's let's wild. touch this. That's wild. I want you to think about what happens when you find yourself in the midst of darkness, in the midst of clutter. You start making bad decisions. You start uh you start bargaining. You start conforming to the world cuz you're so focused, your mind is so cluttered with his opinion yeah. and her opinion and what they're doing over there. You start uh Dimming your lights. Hello. <laughs> you, we want to get in the yeah. industry yeah. of dimming their light. But that's what happened. That's what happened. And so he offered his daughters to them just to keep them from trying to commit this formal sexual act. Mind you, they ain't these angels. Angels. Angels, guys. He said, you can do anything you want with them. Anything. He's saying, you can. Now, what man do you know is going to say, well, you can do anything you want with my daughters. Oh. But just don't try to rape these two, my, my two guests. So you must understand the magnitude of what being surrounded by filth and getting comfortable in it. Does on the inside because you think surrounded by filth and he got comfortable. And this is and this is for those people who think that your filth and your sin and your uh sin life only affects you. Now let's 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 think about this now. Cause see, some of y'all think, oh, this ain't me. This don't apply to me. See, I'm saved. This only applies to somebody that don't know Jesus. Hold, wait a minute. Lot knew the Lord. And the Lord protected Lot. Mm -hmm. The Lord loved Lot. Mm -hmm. The Lord spoke to Lot. Mm -hmm. So you can still be saved and get comfortable and feel. Because mm -hmm. even when Lot chose to come here to Sodom, he saw, oh man, it's going to be real fruitful there. What he did, what did he do? He followed the money. Now, did you think that the you, appearance? Do you think that his daughters woke up that morning? And thought to themselves, hmm. My father was just going we, to scare yeah, me off. And, you know, and I'm going to have to do whatever to whomever. Hello. But let's, mm -hmm. let's, let's talk about what being surrounded and being comfortable in filth does. Let's, let's keep this going. So um, he said, uh, look, I have two daughters. He offered the daughters to him. He said, please don't do anything to these men. They have come to my house and I must protect them. The men surrounding the house answered, get out of our way. They said to themselves, this man Lot came to our city as a visitor. Now he wants to tell us how we should live. So they ain't, they ain't trying to change for you. Then the man said to Lot, we will do worse things to you than to them. This is what it always is going to get to. So now they're threatening him. This is what it always is going to get to when you consider yourself a saint, but surround yourself with. Okay. So the men started moving closer and closer to Lot. They were about to break down the door. Lord knows they want to commit sin so bad. And this mm -mm, is sick. Mm -mm. This is like truly just being controlled, mm -hmm. control a slave to sin. Now he wants to tell us how to live. Then they started coming closer and closer to Lot. And they they were about to break down the door. For the two men stand with Lot, opened the door, pulled him back inside the house, and closed the door. Then they did something to the men outside the door. They caused all these evil men, young and old, to become blind. They had to blind them just to get them off of them. That is sick. That is sick when you think about this nonsense. Yeah, but 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 on a, on a, on a, on another side of things, if you flip the coin to the other side, hey, <laughs> when you live that type of life, I mean, eventually you become blinded by the sin. Hello, hello. So, so blinded because, by the light. Even. See, because if you look at if you look at if you look at it, hold on, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. I'm trying to get to the part. Where, when you start, when you start uh, living, living in sin so much that when people try to bring you an alternative, you start trying to uh, bargain so that, so that uh, 
so that you you don't have to see yeah. the sin. Because obviously Lot lived here. Yeah. Obviously Lot saw sin every day. And allowing them to do whatever they wanted to the daughters would have also been sin. So it was like, okay, I won't commit this sin, but I'm willing to do this one if you can just, you know. But sin is sin. But sin is sin. Sin is sin. Okay, I just wanted to point that out. Go ahead. All right. So let's move on. Verse 11. Then they did something to the men outside the door. They caused all these evil men, young and old, to become blind. So the men trying to get in the house could not find the door. Verse 12, the two men said to Lot, are there any other people from your family living living in the city? Do you have any sons-in-law, sons, daughters, or any other people from your family here? If so, you should tell them to leave now. We are going to destroy this city. That's how horrible this city was. God was going to destroy it. The Lord heard how evil this city is. So he sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law. Now, this is where it gets. I want you to catch this. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law, the men who had married his other daughters. He said, hurry and leave this city. The Lord will soon destroy it. But they thought he was joking. How many of you been so deep into mess that if you start talking about Jesus around your friends, they just laugh it off. Hmm. They can't even take you seriously because you've been so comfortable. You've been so submissive Craig to voice. this evilness, this unrighteousness, this ungodliness so much that they can't even take you serious when you're trying to get your life right. Craig voice. Name one person in the hood that play like that. <laughs> They couldn't even take him serious. How you do that? Hey, how you do that? I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you do that. God knows. All right. So 14. <laughs> we, we That was 14. Hurry and leave the city. They thought he was joking. 15. The next morning at dawn, the angels were trying to make Lot hurry. They said this city will be punished. So take your wife and your two daughters who are still with you and leave this place. Then you will not be destroyed with the city. When Lot did not move fast enough, the two men grabbed his hand. They also took the hands of his wife and his two daughters. The two men led Lot and his family safely out of the city. The Lord was kind to Lot and his family. The Lord was kind to Lot and his family. Mm -hmm. so, you know, Lot, he was still a saved man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Surrounded by filth and darkness that he got comfortable in. So after the two men brought Lot and his family out of the city, one of the men, that's the other thing. When you get comfortable in this nonsense, you got to get uprooted out so yeah. quickly. Yeah. No time. You just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's, that's a dangerous place to be because. He might not make it. He, because, he barely made it out. They had to grab his hands. Be. That's a dangerous place to be. So imagine if you don't have God. Because imagine, imagine if, if, if when the rapture comes and you ain't ready. Hello. Ain't nobody there to grab your hand then. <laughs> you ain't ready. You ain't ready. <laughs> You're going to stay here. Stay ready. You ain't got to get ready. Hello. Hello. So after the two men brought Lot and his family out of the city, one of the men said, now run to save your life. Don't. Don't look back at the city and don't stop anywhere in the valley. Run until you are in the mountains. Hello, run. Flee from sin. That's what the Bible Flee from sin. Hurry up and get far away from it. Get away from here. Don't look back. Run until you are in the mountains. If you stop, you will be destroyed with the city. Mm -hmm. If you stop, because some of y'all thinking, okay, man, I, I know I need to get rid of them, but, but, but it's just a whole lot of buts. If you don't, you're going to get destroyed with them. See, and, and if you that, don't, it's going to destroy you. And that's why I always, I, I truly believe this is life is a series of seasons. And in each season, you have craziness that happens in it. Yeah. And so that means you have the beginning of the season. Mm -hmm. You have the middle of the season. Then you have the end of that season. The beginning is. Pretty much, you know, you're you're on a high from the finishing of the previous season. That middle, though. Yeah. That middle, though. Yeah. The middle is where it gets wicked. Hello. That middle is where it gets crazy. See, but the end is the other side. Now, the end is... 
that place where you can look, you can you can keep walking forward or you can look back. You can keep walking forward or you can look back. He told you what happen if you look back. And that still applies. That means that whatever stronghold, whatever stronghold that was carrying you in the middle of that season, whatever stronghold that you were struggling with, whatever battle you were uh, fighting, when you get out of it and you start looking back at the war, you feel like you just won. And then, and you start thinking to yourself, man, I could just go back. I think I left something back there. Mm-hmm. And then you and you you turn around or go back and see exactly what you left. Yeah. Some of you guys are literally, literally holding on to someone who was not even supposed to be in your life for yeah. three years, maybe just three days. Yeah, and you have brought them into your bed, and you have connected mm-hmm. with them on a mm-hmm. level that you was only supposed to connect with your spouse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got in a relationship, realized, oh my gosh, this is toxic, and now it's destroying you. Yeah, because there is something that has altered your brain in that connection, in that spiritual connection that was only meant for your spouse, Ooh. that has now altered your brain. Alter your thinking into believing that you need them, that you cannot live without them, that they must be meant for each other. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, this toxicity is literally ruining and destroying the inside, the heart, the mentality, and then uh, the spirit. And you have not only because since you're saved, because you yeah. know, I know some people. Uh, this ain't me. I'm saved. Since you're saved, you have the Holy Spirit. Which means you have brought the Holy Spirit into this ungodly situation. Mm-hmm. 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 And so you're literally fighting against self because in your spirit, this is not right. This mm-hmm. is uncomfortable. This is not how it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. This is ungodly. Mm-hmm. But here in your heart and in your mind, because remember where your heart is, so is your treasure. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh my gosh, I need him, 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 I need him. So you're fighting against self and you're destroying yourself. Yep. You're literally <laughs> whooping <laughs> your own hind. And, and when we talk about looking back, you get in it like like we said, it's toxic. You know it's toxic. Let's, let's and then you find and then you find you find you find a way to get out of the stronghold. And then you look back. Oh snap, she pregnant now. Well, let's let's get into looking back. Shall we? Oh, you you were out and then went back. Oh, she, oh, she pregnant now. Oh, he got me pregnant. Oh, now, 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 uh, 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 a a toxic, a toxic, a toxic season in your life. You were out of. Guess what? You just extended it. So, verse seventeen. The end of verse seventeen. He, they, the angels told him, "If you stop, you will be destroyed by the city." Verse eighteen. Balak said to the two men, "Sirs, please don't force me to run so far. You have been very kind to me, your servant. You have been very kind to save me, but I cannot run all the way to the mountains. What if I am too slow and something happens? Mm-hmm. I will be killed." Look, there is a very small town near here. Let me run to that town. I can run there and be safe. The angel said to Lot, very well. I'll let you do that. I will not destroy that town, but run there quickly. I cannot destroy Sodom until you are safely in that town. Mm -hmm. That town is named Zor because it is a small town. Lot was entering the town as the sun came up. And the Lord began to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He caused fire and burning sulfur to fall from the sky. Some of y'all burning in a whole nother way because <laughs> you didn't do what you were supposed to do. But anyway, 25, he destroyed the whole valley, all the cities, the people living in the cities and all the plants. In the valley, verse 23, Lot's wife was following behind him and looked back at the city. Mm -hmm. When she did, she became a block of salt, Mm -hmm. a block of salt, Mm -hmm. a statue. Mm -hmm. And Lot didn't didn't look back. But what if he chose to join the crowd and look back? Join the crowd and look back. Like y'all join the crowd and look back. Paint the picture though, because if she turned into a block of salt, she was no more. Morton's. She was solid. Mm-hmm. Like she was done for. Morton's. Won't no coming back. Morton's. Won't no coming back. McCormick's. I'm saying though. So, just in just just looking back in a snap, she mm-hmm. was just done. Done. Gone. She was just gone. But also, she was stuck. Stuck. That pillow of salt ain't going nowhere. Nope. Yeah. Stuck. Stuck. Yeah, right stuck when, she... when you're looking back at yeah. you stuck. Right right there. 
Some of y'all stuck because mm-hmm. you're looking back. Mm-hmm. Stuck. Yeah. You just hope that you don't get stuck to the point you can't move. <laughs> like been a block of salt. 27. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and went to the place where he stood before the Lord. Abraham looked down into the valley toward the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. He saw clouds of smoke rising from the land like smoke from a furnace. God destroyed the cities in the valley, but he remembered what Abraham had said. So God sent Lot away from those cities before destroying them. Because Abraham, he kept asking, he kept asking, what if I just at least find just one person? Yep. Can you please save? Yep. Save them, save them. Um, save the city. But of course, he couldn't find enough to yeah. save the city. But yeah, he found a lot. The guy remembered a lot and rescued him. So, um, 30. 30, yeah. Verse 30. Lot was afraid to stay in Zor. So he and his two daughters went to live in the mountains in a cave. One day, the older daughter said to the younger, everywhere on earth, on the earth. Now, now this is the last part we want to touch before we get into the declaration of God. And I want you to pay attention to this because if you have children in your toxic situation, not only are you being conformed to the world, but now you're also allowing those same influences mm-hmm. to conform, yeah. influence, disturb yeah. your children, to set in an ungodly mindset. Now you're making them comfortable. We were watching Hoarders. And there was a 12-year-old boy. His room was completely horrible. But it wasn't because he was a bad kid who didn't know how to clean up. It's just that his parents had the whole rest of the house just as horrible, if not worse. It was learned behavior. They had not seen the floor in that home since he was two. And he was 12. And so his room was dirty, not because he's a horrible teenager who didn't clean his room. He learned that hoarding, disastrous Filthy behavior yep. from his parents. Yep. He had never been in a tidy, clean home ever since he was two years old. He probably don't even remember that. Exactly. Exactly. But anyway, 31, one day the older daughter said to the younger, everywhere on the earth, men and women marry and have a family. Because of following the money, because of the choices their father made, here they are, single women, never been married, never had children, and they feel like this is just where they're going to die. They're never going to have a family. She said, so let's get our father drunk with wine. Then we can have sex with him. They have been in filth and comfortable in filth for so long. Is that just that? Make that noise on her. <laughs> they have been comfortable and feel for so long that this is the behavior, this is the ideology, this is the idea that his oldest daughters came up with. Yeah. She said, let's get our father drunk with wine. Then we can have sex with him. That way we can use our father to keep our family alive. They're so desperate to do what they want to do, that they're willing to do sinful acts, anything, whatever it takes to get what they want. This level of greed, this level of holding on to things that that are out of your hands, that are in the hands of the Lord, trying to take matters into your own hands. All of that is a part of trust. All of that is a part of holding on to things, including sinful acts and horrible patterns and behaviors. They were saved from Sodom and Gomorrah into a new land where they can develop a community of righteousness. Well, guess what? They took the They brought right Sodom and Gomorrah right into when, Zor. And when you don't, when you don't, I mean, right into the mountains. And okay. when you don't accept the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it doesn't matter what you feel like you turned over with your own power or whatever leaf you turned over or what change you feel like you made in your own power. Guess what? You just going to take it with you. Wherever you go, you think. That uh, if you you think if you if you live the whole your whole life in the projects and you move to a fancy neighborhood, you just gonna be like the people in the fancy neighborhood as soon as you get there. No, you gonna have to change. All of this dies to keep the family alive, whatever that means. And so, verse thirty three. That night, the two girls went to their father and got him drunk with wine. Then the older daughter went and had sexual relations with him. He did not even know when she came to bed or when she got up. 
The next day, the older daughter said to the younger daughter, last night I went to bed with my father. Let's get him drunk with wine again tonight. Then you can go and have sex with him. Like, how did they even get him drunk? I know, man. Y'all, it's just wild. In this way, we can use our father to have children and our family will not come to an end. Incest. So that night, the two girls got their father drunk with wine. Then the younger daughter went and had sexual relations with him. Again, Lot did not know when she came to bed or when she got up. Both of Lot's daughters became pregnant. Their father was the father of their babies. Granddaddy and pappy. Grandpappy and pappy. The older daughter gave birth to a son. She named him Moab. Moab is the ancestor of all the Moabites living today. The younger daughter also gave birth to a son. She named him Ben Ami. Ben Ami is the ancestor of all the Ammonites living today. That's what this is the tragic end, in my opinion, it's tragic end. He knew God and he probably went to heaven, you know. But from the very beginning, Lot chose this place because. He saw that it was flowing with milk and honey and it was just great <laughs> lands and waters. He followed the money. And even when he got there, he saw how toxic the city was, yep. how destructive it was, how ungodly it was, and how unrighteous there. it was. Stayed there and got comfortable because it's all about the back. Mm -hmm. It's all about the back. And even offered up his own daughters to make his guests comfortable somewhere where he probably should not have even been. And he could not let it go. And his wife was so attached that she looked back and got stuck. And she was no more. Right. And in the very end, he is stuck in the mountains in a cave where he will probably die. Witnessing his daughters. Give have birth to his granddaughters. Grandchildren. Witnessing his daughters give birth to his grandchildren. And he has to die with that. That's yeah. the end. Yeah, the witness and his daughters give birth to his grandchildren that he's parent that he, he parents. <laughs> so we urge you guys today, don't get comfortable in filth. Mm -hmm. This is not just about your home. Because a lot of we're talking about hoarding. Yeah. Now some of your houses really do. They really do look like this. Some of them, they look like this. You know, some of them they look crazy. Same. Oh, some of them look like this crazy but some of y'all this is what your spirit looks like mm -hmm. or your relationship you know mm -hmm. your greed this is what your lifestyle looks like mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what so it's not just your home cause you thinking oh no man you know I, I ain't this my house, it, it ain't this bad, but your life is. You know, and when somebody, your brain looks like this, and and when you and when you and when you uh when you get called out about it, or when you feel whatever little bit of conviction a conviction you answer to, yeah, you'll pick a couple cups up, yeah, yeah, attitude. It looks like a, this. Pick a couple cups up and just you know and 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 throw it throw it on the lawn and say I clean something up. What a lot of y'all don't realize is that homes that look like this started somewhere. Mm -hmm. It didn't just wake up and it was this. It started with one can at a time. Yep. One amount of feces at a time. Yeah. One piece of cotton, one bottle left out at a time. One roach. And you didn't got so comfortable that it just keeps piling up. And before you know it, when you do finally bring up Jesus... Your friends don't even take you seriously. Yeah, yeah. They laugh it off. Yeah. You've lived like this for so long and it's gotten this bad. And now you don't even know where to begin yeah. to fix it. Yep. And so we're going to get into these declarations. Yes, yes. For Mighty Free today. Yes, yes. <clears throat> right, all right, all right. We dec decree and declare that nothing will remain in our presence longer than God predestined it to be. We decree and declare that nothing will clutter mm -hmm. our space or our mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like this just put out. Keep going. You can keep going. 
All right. We decree and declare that we will not hold on to possessions, relationships, ideas, or anything else that interfere with the purpose God has set aside for us. We decree and declare that all things removed from our lives were for our good and will be perceived as such. We decree and declare that we will not obsess over items, relationships, other people, or disappointments of the past. By faith, we will not live with a heart of grief or with the giving heart of Christ himself. We decree and declare that material possessions, people, jobs, employers, money, lifestyles, etc., will not be made into idols. We decree and declare that our trust shall remain in God and our faith shall not dwindle. In the name of Jesus, we shall look back Desire things of the past that are not for us, or cover, we shall not look back. Desire things of the past that are not for us, or cover, covet the possessions, relationships, or circumstances of others. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke oppression, depression, withdrawal issues, and all other mental disorders. We bind them now and cast them into the dry places. By faith, we accept God's healing in Christ Jesus, and those disorders shall not hold us bound any longer. We decree and declare that we have accepted God's peace that has been freely afforded to us through Jesus Christ. And therefore, our minds are clear and open to hear the words mm -hmm. and instructions of our Father in heaven. We rebuke the opinions and ideologies of man and society not aligning with God's will for our lives. Mm -hmm. And we command our ears to hear the word of the Lord and banish the words on the wicked. We decree and declare that our minds and hearts are clutter free and they are not attached to bondage, heartbreak, obsessions, any curses or ungodly soul types. Uh -huh. We speak against any clutter, messiness, uh -huh. filth, uh -huh. uncleanliness, unrighteousness, immoral mindsets, unholy intentions, oppressing patterns and behaviors or damage in our lives, minds, bodies, spirits, and hearts right now. And we bind them in the name of Jesus. All clutter has been removed from our lives in the name of Jesus, and we have been set free. Mm -hmm. We have faith. We, we agree, agree. We believe it. We, we receive it. it and it, it is so. In Jesus' name, amen. That's right. So, guys, we are officially... Children, Children of, of liberty. liberty. John, we're going to leave you with this verse. John chapter 8, verse 36. It says, if the son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall, shall be free indeed. indeed. So you are free indeed. That's that right. is the word of the Lord, folks. That's right. Let's, uh, let us close this with prayer. Mm -hmm. And I hope that uh, this touches your heart. Mm -hmm. Father God, we thank you for this evening, this gathering of the minds. Father God, we thank you for this word, Father God. We thank you for the spirit, Father God, that was present, Father God, as we spoke. Father God, and we pray that the spirit remains present, Father God, in the houses of those who have watched and listened, Father God, as they carry on their night. Father God, we thank you for giving us strength, Father God, to carry out this word, Father God, to do your will, Father God, and to share the good news and the gospel, Father God, with the people who need it the most. Father God, we pray that this word sinks deep into their hearts, Father God. We pray that it, it gives them wisdom, Father God. It gives them strength. It gives them power, Father God, your power, Father God. We pray that, that these people, the people who have watched and who have listened, Father God, we pray that they take away everything that you need them to take away from it, Father God. Everything that you need them to see, Father God, we pray that they see it and hear it clearly, Father Father God, and we pray that they are empowered by it, Father God, and we pray that they can move forward and encourage someone else, Father God, to move forward in that same courage and in that same power, Father God, and we just ask that you continue to be you. Keep us bold, Father God, and keep us keep us ready. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Amen. Hey, and, uh, remember, if you want the PDF of these declarations, you can always go to the website, illyministries.us forward slash prophecy. Get all the copies of all the declaration PDFs all the way back from several, several months oh, ago, yes, yes. as well as catch all the past episodes. And don't forget to sign up to share your triumph, share your testimony on Triumph, the docuseries, guys. Yes, yes. Yes, if you have a story of something, a struggle 
that you went through that God himself brought you out of and you feel like it's a story that the world needs to hear for the purpose of bringing them out of that same struggle. We want to hear it. We want to hear it. It could potentially help someone save their life, guys. Yes. And so God did not give you that testimony for you to just sit on it. Yes, he Keep did it not. To yourself. He did not. It is going to not only strengthen you, but it is also going to benefit others. So yes. we definitely want to hear your triumph, hear yes, your victory, yes. hear your testimony. Yes, yes. And definitely follow our Triumph Travels. Um, as some of you guys know, we're on the road. Mm-hmm. We're literally in a hotel slash apartment right, right now. Yes. And um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're in Oklahoma and we have so many other states to travel to. Yep, filming yep. the testimonies of believers in Christ, just like you, just like us. And so thank you guys so much for supporting the journey, supporting the ministry, supporting the label, yeah. and just being here for the ride. Yeah. Subscribe, comment, like, share, and great things that you do. And, even, and, 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 and if you see any foolishness, tell them shut up. <laughs> Get up out of your filth, guys. You have been set free. We love you guys. Yeah. See you next time. Bye.